All right, so we're here at my Monkey Town branch at Reptile Garden, and we used to be keeping a bird gadder in this enclosure. We've moved him to our other park. He's going behind the scenes. He's kind of uh, served his purpose here. We're going to use him more for educational um, purposes for shows and ID courses and things like that. And then we had a copper head on this side, which we moved down there. Now, this piece of wood over here is actually easy. We just need to remove it. It's um, siliconed on here. So this is actually one cage. And we've removed the divider that's in the middle. So in this video, we're going to be covering how to do a bioactive um, enclosure. You can do this with small scale or even up to massive large scale. Like this is a fairly big scale. And uh, we're going to go through each stage and what you need and the purposes um, for that and everything. So the glass is all dirty. We've just disinfected this whole enclosure. So we're obviously only going to polish and clean the glass once we've added the last bits and pieces because things are going to get dirty, it's going to get dusty. So there's no point in cleaning the glass, making it look all good now. All right, so we're going to go to the back. We're going to have a look. Um, I'm pretty happy with the quality of the enclosure. Um, you might be thinking, uh, it's all wood, how's it going to hold water? Because a bioactive enclosure needs uh, water in a drainage layer. And these cages have been pool coated. So like in your fiberglass pool, the last layer they put on is um, resin. It's called pool coat. And it's actually got like a sort of wax in it that comes to the surface and water runs off of it like a water off a duck's back. It's really good stuff. So there's no way water can get through it at all unless there's a little screw or something that punctures it or an area you don't get it covered quite right. So we had a little bit of water damage in this very corner over here. We'll have a look at it just now. But that is not actually um, from the water that was in the cage itself. The roof was leaking, a little bit of water ran down, got into the, the wood where the door actually closes and it kind of frotted it a bit from the outside in. But otherwise, this enclosure is still as good as the day we made it. Um, I think it's been going six years now. And uh, yeah, let's hop at the back and check it out and we'll show you guys how to get a bioactive setup going. So the whole park here at Monkey Town is like this um, with a bioactive setup. And if you guys want to have a quick look at a big enclosure, we can have a look at our Forest Cobras enclosure here, also fully bioactive. All right, so let's go have a look at the back and uh, we'll show you step by step how to get this done. Okay, so we're just taking a look at this enclosure from the other side. Here you can see the, the beam that's just silicone on there. So I need to slip in a blade and clean all the silicone off. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. You can see where the previous divider board was here. Okay, so as I say, this is all pool coated. Okay, it's nice and smooth and uh, the corners are all fiberglassed. You can actually fiberglass the whole inside, it'll be even better, but as we can see it's lasting nice and long. And then over here, this is a little inspection cap so that we can check the water level that's in the bottom here. Okay, and then these little slots over here, so this can actually fill up with water. So if the water level's up to here, which would be way too high, then the water level will be inside this tube over there. So this way, with this little inspection cap, we can just look down to see, oh, it's bone dry, or if there is water. So we can always keep a little bit of water at the drainage level. And we can also always just mist from the top and it gets nice and wet and everything. Okay, so here is the side where we had a little bit of water damage, that's why it's this color, but it's still waterproof from this side. Okay, what happened is, the water was running down and it got into the wood through here. So it seeped in the wood here and caused the problems. So what we might also do is just waterproof this a little bit. All right, so we're gonna get started with the first layer. All right, so this stuff here is called lacquer. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But these are little clay balls. They're they're extremely light, very aerated, so air can act, like water can actually penetrate in here and it works as a filtering system. So you get a lot of bioactive bacteria that's going to grow on this. So stuff like this is used um, in the bottom of pot plants quite a lot and also people can use this for filtration systems and things like that. So we want to get a fairly nice layer at the bottom here. 
So I'm just going to chuck this in. Might look a little bit dirty, that doesn't matter. And then we just want to spread it out evenly. So we've got a fairly nice deep layer, probably like an inch or two. So whenever there's water in that going in the soil, it's going to drain through to this bottom layer. So I mean this layer could hold water just fine, and that's obviously going to promote the bioactivity and that growing on in here. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is add this material layer, which is called Bidim. Okay, we're gonna, I cut this little, it's all cut to size already. I just cut a little um, cross in here, plus sign, so that this little piece can fit over the, drip, the little inspection cap. And then obviously what you wanna do is you wanna have it coming up the sides a little bit. If you cut it here, you're going to get a lot of soil and things running down into your drainage layer, which is not good. And you're going to end up with all our sand in the bottom there. It's not the end of the world, but obviously, if you want to do something, do it properly the first time. Best to have it running up the sides a little bit. Okay. And we can also just maybe pat it down a little bit. Because things are going to sort of eventually, over time, find it their way in. And also with the soil layer, you'll find that over time it can drop, so then you can always add on as you're digging it out, removing large amounts of feces and stuff. You're gonna need to add and top up anywhere. So it's pretty much like a composting system inside a cage. All right. Okay. So now that we've got that all sorted, We're going to start with the soil mix that we're going to throw in here now. Now we're going to add all the substrate. So this here is just a good quality potting soil. So what we want to do is dump the soil into the middle. You don't want to dump it on the side because it might fall down the side of there or something. So I just want to get all this out. Okay, so really nice good quality potting soil. There's already like quite a bit of organic matter and stuff in here. You want to go with something that is 100% organic. You don't want any funny fertilizer and all that kind of stuff added in here. Because that can also be problematic for your reptile or the snake's skin. Okay. We're just going to get all three of these bags emptied and we have got some more backup in case we need some more. Yeah. Yeah. So with the soil being all 100% organic and everything, there's already some good bacteria and everything going on inside of it and that healthy bacteria goes and attacks all the negative stuff you don't want okay so then we just push it out we make sure that we push it around so that the bidim falls in place nicely and push it up tight against the sides okay slowly working our way around 
and this way because it's tight here you're not going to get too much stuff falling back in there you could also maybe on like a smaller scale you could have a little um, sort of framework that pins it in place nicely or you could even silicone it in place but I mean if you ever want to put another animal in here and have to redo everything it's going to be a bit of a pain to get all the silicone off okay alright so we're just going through everywhere and just pat it down like this okay so because there's a lot of organic matter in this potting soil already it is quite light and fluffy because that's what you want with a bioactive system is nice fluffy soil okay three bags actually make quite a lot might be a little bit higher on this side than we are on this side but at least we're up on both sides so that's fine it's not the end of the world okay, and if you've got like a serious burrowing snake you might get problems that they're gonna go try and go down underneath the stuff which is not cool my snout of cobra did that then you get a whole lot of soil and everything going down the back there but Ah, that wasn't too serious. Okay, just still going very well, but we're going to be moving her soon anyway. Okay. All right, so now we want to add a few more components and things. We can start with adding peat. Okay. So this is just palm peat. It's nice and wet, comes in a brick. Very light and fluffy. So this is really good stuff for making the soil so it doesn't get too hard and compact. Okay. I'm just gonna dump all of that in there. I think that's probably one five kg block. Alright, then we're gonna add some bark to the mix. Okay. One bag quickly. Okay, so this is just a fine bark. I'm keeping animals on this stuff for ages. Very, very good. And then this here, this is vermiculite. Okay, this is the stuff we use in incubation of reptiles. This is a very fine mix. I think we even get one that's called super fine, which is even finer than this. So also again, very light and fluffy. So we're going to add some of this in, we're going to mix this all nicely together. Hope I'm not going too overboard with the amount of vermiculite and stuff, but once it's all mixed in, you'll see it actually look really nice. Okay. And I think we can also probably add some more on here okay. and then there's also things like adding uh, moss we're just actually struggling to get hold of moss at the moment the only moss that I can find is this dyed moss which is horrible but sphagnum moss is great and also dried leaves so we're just going to mix all this stuff together very nice I've got a, something sharp right up my fingernail about halfway oh, let's find out what that's a little piece of fiberglass there that went right up there hey, nah. okay Okay, so you see when it all mixing comes together, we're going to get quite a nice look with it. Alright. 
I'm getting all kinds of dirt in here as well, in my wound. Oh well, we'll F10 it. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to go through and get this all mixed up and I'll see what the sort of finished product on this looks like and then as I say, you know, adding some leaves will be great and uh, for the critter that we're putting in here, I'd love to get bamboo leaves but sure, we just don't find those easily. So, I don't know if there's anyone local in Cape Town, we're looking for bamboo leaves if you can help us. Alright, okay, so we're just going to get this all mixed up. So we've mixed in all the uh, substrate. As you can see, it's quite a nice mix. A lot of space for little hojas and stuff to go in because at the end, we want to add like things like pill bugs and springtails and all that kind of stuff. And earthworms, they'll keep all the soil nice and loose and healthy. So we just want to add a bit of husk chips on the top. So this comes as a five kg block. Well, I don't know if it's exactly five kilos, but I think it's around there. And we just break this up. It's quite easy to break up. It's not like the fine petri chair. You actually have to put water in. Okay. And then we're going to mix all of this in as well, just on the sort of surface layer, just to get a nice sort of bedding. All the finer stuff might sink to the bottom. And then... Uh, We'll have quite a nice little sort of matted top and every now and again we're going to go in and mix and stir the ground. So I actually quite like mixing the husk and the bark together. So we'll break up some of this and then we'll add some bark to it. And you see if we get a nice look around there. Yeah. Yeah. Very dusty job. I'm get home and blow my nose tonight. It's just going to be black with all kinds of dust. Okay. Okay, so you see that makes quite a nice, nice mix. Very cool. So we're just going to do that through the rest of the enclosure. And then we can do a little bit of decorating and putting some things that we're going to work in here. Cool. <coughs> okay, so it's actually a, it's a few days later. We were missing certain things that we needed to finish this uh, project. So we figured out, uh, well, let's go get some moss and get everything we need. It's going to make it for a much better video. So we just got the sphagnum moss. And what I want to do with this, as you can see, with this decor there's a lot of gaps okay and this is a juvenile king cobra so i'm worried that if it tries to go through gaps and does silly things that it can actually get stuck okay some animals can get stuck and they can actually end up dying in situations like this now you guys might be thinking that's a bit crazy you know in the wild there's all kinds of things but yes in the wild you know a snake comes across something like that he goes past it when they're in a new environment they're trying to get out they do stupid things and then also you always want to make sure that whenever you're fitting heavy branches or things that it's very secure so that it can't actually fall and crush an animal. Things like rocks are not good because if they dig underneath them, the rock can fall on top of them. So any rocks, if you're dealing with real heavy rocks, they should be in contact with the base of the floor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this sphagnum moss and we're going to fill all the little gaps and everything. So like taking this and just really trying to work it in and jam it in any gap that we can find and we'll do it from both ends and that'll actually prevent the animal from uh, trying to go through something like this because now it's all blocked up it's a lot safer so like also over here this nice big ridge and stuff you know just shoving moss in the ridge actually also makes the deck wall look just so much better so you can just think once we've finished doing all of this with all this moss it is going to look really really cool now what would be even better is if this moss actually came to life and uh, started growing everywhere but unfortunately um, this stuff I think is all sort of irradiated because it's imported 
so it's actually killed with radiation and stuff like that so that it doesn't grow again because obviously they might be worried about certain insects in it or also other seeds and things like that or plants we don't want around. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to keep going with this moss and stuff into all these holes. Okay, it might also help sometimes to just wet it a little bit and just jam it in there. So, I mean, you can see what I mean. It looks really nice. If we get the nice pieces facing outward. Okay, this is the back of the branch. No one's going to see it, but uh, I can appreciate that. <laughs> So we're going to just go through, fill all the gaps, and then uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the enclosure. So we've got all the moss in place now. I'm quite happy with how it looks. I mean, there's obviously some pieces that are going to come out and fall down. It doesn't matter. It'll just become a bioactive substrate. And then I want to just add some bamboo leaves. Um, because this is obviously going to make it look really, really nice, more sort of natural from where they come from. So we're just going to mix these out and about. And slowly but surely we'll be mixing it into the soil as well. Okay. So we've got a nice bag of this. We've heat treated it and froze it and everything just in case there's any funny hookahs. Although we're going to be adding bugs into the enclosure anyway very shortly okay, we don't want to get too many around the water bowl just yet so it's probably going to make a nice mess with that okay just dump the rest there okay so i mean most of the plants in here are fake and that is well all the plants actually are fake and that's because they're most likely going to get crushed and that when we put them in and it's all new but there are some plants which are pretty hardy which we can add um, at a later stage if we want to. But overall I'm quite happy with how it's starting to look. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to add some isopods. Okay, I've got a whole nice piece of cork. I just actually want that cork back for the next lot. Okay, so we just knock them off. They're obviously going to also be eating a lot of the leaves and the dead skin and things like that. Okay, and there's a whole lot here on the top surface. Maybe don't want the coal in there. Coal's actually quite good as well for near the drainage layer, which I didn't add, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so we're gonna release these little guys in here. They've got plenty leaf litter and everything to start eating, and as I say, they'll get the bits of poop and the shed and all that kind of stuff. So these are our little cleaners. This is literally making it like the forest floor. So to do a setup like this takes quite a bit, but once, once it's up and running and working properly, it looks amazing and it's a lot easier than anything else. If a snake takes a big dump over here, just grab the dump, chuck it away, turn the ground over a little bit, everything looks after itself. It's the best system ever. And it's more naturalistic, the animals are quite happy and healthy. I saw we also had some millipedes in there and uh, yeah, this one I don't think it's going to be so easy to see. We probably have just put this in here let them climb off but we've got a lot of springtails and things. They like quite a lot of moisture in that so a lot of them also they're hydrophobic so they float on the water. So we're just going to empty them out. And the best way is to actually have them on uh, distilled water as well. Okay, so they're all over here. We're going to actually leave these in here and then they can climb off and venture off at their own time. Okay, I think that was the bulk of it. We can leave these ones, they can carry on breeding to start a new group. Okay. And then lastly of our things we want to be adding we're going to add some earthworms okay, there you can see some nice red wrigglers we'll drop a couple here and there they're obviously going to go down to the more moist areas 
I'm going to put some near the water bowl. It's always underneath the water bowl, it's nice and wet. And eventually they're just going to be all over the place and just take over. So we might just um, add a little more water here just to get it everything nice. Nice and wet so that they can find their way down as well. Okay, so there you go, all guys. So make a nice moist patch so that they don't dry out too quickly and they're gonna find their way down to this nice moisture level. Okay, I'm gonna do the same for these guys over here. Tails. Okay, there we go. Now I think there is just one thing that is missing. Oh, that's a glow worm. That's pretty cool. These little glow worms running around in here. So they won't do any harm either. All good. That's pretty cool though. Check this little glow worm going. Pretty sure that's a little glow worm. All right, okay, so finally just to add the beast. Okay, I'll go grab him quickly. We're gonna pop him in here and then we can check what it looks like from the front quickly. All right, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. These pieces of driftwood look amazing. I've been saving these for a special occasion and I think a King Cobra is uh, very right fitting for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the snake quickly. Alright, there you go buddy. Okay, so there's our Malaysian King Cobra. His name is Hannibal. You guys might have seen him from uh, the video where I convert feeding King Cobras. Okay, so we're just gonna... Oh, he's so fast. Okay, let me just reset you quick. Pop him this side, hopefully give us a little more time so we can close up. Yeah, so he's a busy, busy guy. He obviously oh, he just wants to go all over the place. Come on, buddy. Try to pop him up on the branches and give us a bit more time. Jeez, oh, he just wants up. <laughs> Don't you like your new home? Oh. Okay. That's working with a king for you. Come on, buddy. I can only close this door once you're out of the way. As you can see, not defensive at all. He's just more sort of exploring and everything. So here's the final finished product. You can see it looks pretty cool with all the moss and everything. All nice leaf litter. And he's busy exploring here. So now if that was a real plant, he'd be starting to break that one already. So he's gonna explore around a little bit and he'll settle in with time. And as you can see, we've got a cage protector here um, for the heat projector that we've got in for this guy. Okay. So yeah, he's a busy little body. He's gonna love it in here. Always take a little while to settle in, and then you'll get some lack of food. I'm sure he'll be quite happy in here. Some nice space until he needs an upgrade again. Cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video about uh, bioactive substrate enclosure for the King Cobra. He's fast, he's already on this side. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'm gonna get uh, more videos out as I can. We're very, very busy with all kinds of things, so it does take us a while to get some of our videos out. Cool, hope you guys enjoyed.